of the ongoing challenge of the fact that the comic book format is uniquely American in its appeal and the characters to a certain extent are um, also uniquely American. Although it's kind of, it, it's interesting going back to the notion of brands, I can remember early at Warner and certainly in discussions with other companies, people would always say, you know what, consumers don't choose brands when they're making entertainment decisions except Disney or except Miramax. But then, they, you know, there, the, there's proof out there that, that properties can override, or rather brands can, in fact, be built up over time through careful and nurturing. And I think similarly, when you look at Harry Potter as a uniquely English property and story and setting, or if you look at Batman and what Chris Nolan has done, well, there was a great deal of resistance um, internally early on to the notion of, of exporting any of our superheroes outside of the US. But when you have a great story well told, it's interesting how much they resonate. And a lot of these superhero stories, as Mimi pointed out, are, are um, uniquely human in their appeal. They are so much about being outsiders and, and overcoming that. So I, I think it, in many cases, I don't mean to oversimplify, but I think it, it is doable if we come back to what's great about the story and then tell it <coughs> or execute it as well as possible. It may not always work. Superman's always going to represent America in a way that isn't appealing in every territory. But if we tell a great Superman story, I, I'm not sure that our own sense of limitation is, is really what the case is, but we'll see.